Okay, it says I'm live. Let's have a look. <laughs> uh, here it's saying connect. Let's, let me just copy the stream key. It is not doing it. But we're going to have a quick look. Guys, thanks if you're just joining me now. Uh, we are just trying to... I haven't done this for a long, long time and we are trying to use a new streaming platform and apparently it doesn't like it. So let's have a look and see if it's doing it using my trusty... Okay, so it says I'm live, uh, Paul. <laughs> I can see it on the front page of uh, Jackie F. So if you don't mind, just let me copy the link and post it elsewhere, I guess. Uh, Well, this is the link. Can you see it? Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to go back to the event and just post the link to the event. Yeah? Yeah, do that. Okay. Uh, guys, thanks so much for joining me. Sorry about this. Uh, we're usually, <laughs> well, I'll be lying if I said we never have any technical problems, but we, yeah, we're usually a little bit more prepared than this. Uh, but again, thanks so much for joining me. This is Jackie M. And um, if you're, whether you're tuning in from my Facebook event or from other Facebook pages, I would like, in fact, Paul, if you can actually set it up to cross post. Uh, because we're doing, using a workaround for this, it's a little bit more tricky than you would expect. But again, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jackie M and I am a former Malaysian restaurant owner based here in Sydney, Australia. And, uh, and if you've been following my content for the longest time, right, I was, I was trying to actually uh, remember how long since I started using a Thermomix. Uh, for those of you who've been following my content online or in videos, I think most of you would be familiar with seeing this Thermomix sitting in the background. I get a lot of comments about it. That's actually a, a, a TM5, a Thermomix 5, right? Which I bought, I think, around about the, the 2014. So you can imagine how long ago that was. I've never really kind of like, I, I answer questions offhandedly about my TM5, Thermomix 5, when I get asked, right? But I have never really kind of focused on it that much. Uh, with a couple of exceptions I created, I basically collated some of the recipes in my uh, blogs uh, for, for people to be able to access that are useful for those who have thermomixes or similar devices that uh, do this sort of cooking, all right? Um, but anyway, just as a little bit of a background, uh, a few weeks ago, I got contacted by Thermomix, um, so it's business development manager here in Sydney, Australia, to ostensibly uh, showcase this new tool that came with the new version of the Thermomix, which is a TM6. Okay, and I went to watch uh, the demonstration, but a long story short, I realized that the TM6, although it looks virtually identical uh, here, to a TM5, you see, they, they, you can't really tell them apart, right? Um, apart from a larger screen here, they look very similar, right? Um, I have never really given much thought to upgrading to a TM6. The TM5 has served me for over seven years and I've never had any problems with it, right? I haven't like broken anything in it or whatever. I, I remember one time I did send it off for a service and they recalibrated the scales, the inbuilt scales. But that aside, I've never had any like malfunction or whatever with it. Um, and a lot of my cooking um, and my recipes are based around timings from using a Thermomix. Uh, and the reason, my reasoning for this is that the Thermomix really is kind of like an all-in-one uh, appliance, okay? Uh, some people say, oh, it's a glorified blender. And some people might say, oh, it's uh, for people who don't know how to cook, right? Uh, and <laughs> yeah, maybe you think that about me. Uh, but it does do a lot of stuff apart from just blending. And in this special series of uh, live broadcasts, I'm going to actually do that very quickly on alternate days this week, all right? I know everyone's busy with leading up to Christmas and all that, right? But if you have time at lunchtime for the next uh, uh, 
you know, for this and the next two sessions, I'd love for you to join me so we can go through together what I've learned about the Thermomix, the TM6, the new version. As you can see, I ended up buying it because I was so impressed with this added functionalities, which we can go into in a little bit. And also, uh, I'm going to show you some of the things that I use to cook uh, in the Thermomix, okay? Some of which would work across all Thermomix models and some you can only do in the TM6 because of the added functionality, all right? So that's where we're at, that's where my headspace is at. But uh, thanks again, everyone, for joining me. If you know of anyone who might be in the space to check out uh, what the Thermomix is all about, by all means, please share these broadcasts to them. And if you're interested, to, uh, I, I actually had all this beautifully set up by the way, but unfortunately, like I said, I'm always like playing around with new technologies and new uh, ways of doing things and which really kind of means that I, I'm sometimes my own worst enemy and um, basically the technology I was banking on did not work, so I'm just streaming uh, uh, directly into my Facebook events right now, okay, which is a little bit problematic because I was hoping to be able to concurrently live stream onto YouTube and onto Twitch and everywhere else that I have a presence, but right now, today, we are only doing it on Facebook, so please share it out and uh, if you're interested in the uh, in getting a hold of the recipes I'll be covering over the next three sessions, this is where you want to go, okay? so. Okay, I did not even put it there. Okay, <laughs> you want to go to um, you want to go to MalaysianChefs.com slash uh, recipes. Easy, right? MalaysianChefs.com slash recipes. Just pop in your uh, first name and your email address, and uh, you will end up in my subscriber list, and I will send out the recipes to you. And at some point, we're going to actually finesse that mailing list to tag people who are specifically interested in the Thermomix and we can carry on the conversation further there, all right? So I've got Paul in the background who's going to pop over and uh, hang out with me in a little bit, uh, but make sure you say hello and let me know where you're watching from and tell me uh, whether you own a Thermomix or you have a, you know, what model of a Thermomix if you do own one or you are just curious to know about what the Thermomix is all about and finally, um, you know, if, well, where you're based, okay, that's, that does play into it. <laughs> I'm in Australia as you would know, but um, yeah, so anyway, let's get into it. This is my TM6, right, like I said, it looks very, very similar if you've been following my broadcast to my TM5 back there. Okay, so what are the differences and what got me on to deciding to actually upgrade to a TM6. Uh, first of all, uh, those of you who use your Thermomix, who do have a Thermomix, just post in the comments what kind of dishes you actually use, uh, use it for and what you find to be most helpful. And for those of you who don't own a Thermomix, right, what do you think is the most important part about cooking, okay? How much cooking do you do and what do you, what is your emphasis? What's your cooking philosophy? Like, are you looking to save time, save money, eat more healthy, whatever it is? Just post in the comments. And right now, I'm broadcasting, and like I said, we're running a little bit of your, uh, behind here. I don't want to hold you guys too long, but for those of you who are, that's Paul here, by the way, uh, from South Africa, for those of you uh, who are tuning in, especially during your lunchtime, uh, just post in the comments, and if I don't answer them during this broadcast itself, I will go back and reply to you directly after this, okay, at some point anyway, over the next uh, 24 hours. Okay, so Paul? Yes. <laughs> what did you think when you first uh, saw me cook live on there? Because obviously, for those of you that know, Paul is from South Africa, he's been in Australia for a few months now, um, but you don't have Thermomixes in South Africa. So if, from what I found out is there actually is a Thermomix consultant thing in oh. South Africa, but it closed down I think last year, oh. and I don't know if it's uh, reopened again. Okay, okay, okay. So it's a it's a tricky situation, okay. but I had never heard of a Thermomix. <laughs> okay, so you've never heard of a Thermomix. Uh, let me actually, you know, before I forget, I'm going to post this link to my Facebook. Let me have a look my Facebook profile, and again, I'm really embarrassed about holding everyone up because I'm very conscious that everyone's busy, especially over the Christmas period. But here we go. I've just posted this on my Facebook 
profile for those of you who were expecting to watch us. Okay, so anyway, um, Paul, you use the thermal mix almost more than I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> All right, for well, someone who doesn't know what it is and how, how it works and whatnot, right? It's uh, pretty impressive. And um, so, uh, okay, for those who don't know what the thermal mix is, how would you describe it in your own terms? So basically, it's a, a multi tool appliance, if I can sort of phrase it like that, is when you look at it, it just looks like a blender on steroids, but then when you see what it can do, it, um, yeah, it has so many, basically you can do anything you need except maybe get wok hay in a Thermomix, so. Okay, blender on steroids is a good way to put it, um, yeah. but look, uh, when I had the TM5, I pretty much used it in that sense as well. For those of you who don't know, I used to own a restaurant and this is pre Thermomix days, you know, we're talking 20, what, yeah, up to 10 years ago, I gave up a restaurant. I always, every time people ask me how long ago I closed my restaurant, I remember because it's the same as Noah's age. Noah's 10 years old now, so I closed my restaurant 10 years ago to look after Noah and, you know, obviously because his special needs, blah, 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 right? Um, but anyway, so back then I didn't have like a Thermomix and I used to buy these super expensive commercial equipment to do my work, right? And if you know anything about Malaysian food, what kind of ingredients do you use in Malaysian cooking? All the well, lemongrass is the one that always comes to mind. Yeah, lemongrass, <laughs> right? Uh, I actually got a lemongrass for one of my birthdays while I owned a restaurant. It was a super expensive commercial like food processor. And I would put in the lemongrass, right? All these big fibrous, like tough, like spices. The really that you good use. lemongrass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And you put it in and then you blend it until one day it died okay so uh, and the same with my stepmom to to this day does not own a thermomix when she wants to blend lemongrass because she does a <laughs> lot oh, yeah. she does it because she makes this amazing beef rendang right but she needs a lot of fresh lemongrass so what she would do is she, she has her normal blender right and she would put like all these sticks of lemongrass in it and she'll run it until the motor gets really hot until you can practically not touch the thing and just before it burns out the motor she stops it and then what she does she lets it cool down and she goes away and she vacuums the floor <laughs> all right she goes and cleans house and does her usual spring cleaning come back like 45 minutes later when the motor has cooled down empties it out and does the next lot okay so that's how she would do it okay but the point is that like a lot of these really tough um, kitchen activities, uh, uh, you know, you can manage beautifully in a Thermomix. Okay, so uh, from that point of view, right, there are other obviously powerful blenders in the market, right? But yeah. what the, the Thermomix has beyond that as well, it does other things, right? There are, there are super powerful blenders, you know, things that you use for for juices and whatnot, right? Yeah, um, I was going to say, because like my dream is like the Good Food and Wine Show in South Africa. Always every year had a, a demo from I think it was the Vitamix. Vitamix, so yeah, that's it. Everyone's like, going, yeah. Oh, I gotta have a Vitamix. Like this was my dream, like for <laughs> the last five years or whatever. Yeah. And so I had the dream of getting a Vitamix, uh, and obviously not knowing what a Thermomix was, it was never on the radar. Yeah. And then after <laughs> having used a Thermomix, I'm like, why would you want a Vitamix? This is more powerful. Yeah. <laughs> and it does so many more things. Yeah, it's powerful and it does so many more things. And what we're going to do today, uh, and we're, like I said, we are we're just kind of like figuring things out as we go along, mm -hmm. right? So this is my TM6. What we're going to do is we're going to make tofu fa. Uh, if let me know if you know what tofu fa is, uh, Paul. <laughs> when was the first time you had tofu fa? Uh, did I have it in your kitchen or was it an Epo? I think we had it in your kitchen once. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah. tofu fa. Okay, tofu fa is soybean pudding. Okay, which you can get like it's got a Chinese, a Chinese origin, very very popular in Malaysia. And what you do, you make it from soybeans. Okay, so these are fresh soybeans. We are not going to actually make the tofu fa from scratch in here today because it's a little bit noisy. But that's what I actually usually do. Okay, when I make tofu fa nowadays, I would like you know. Use the soybeans, just chop them in, add water, cover it, and blitz it. Okay, mm -hmm. I blitz it to you know until it's completely fine, and then I strain it out. I strain it out through like a muslin cloth, right? A couple of layers of muslin cloth, and then where's a cool little gadgety thing? To, oh, I'll show it later. <laughs> and then what I do is I rinse out the bowl and then pour the strained 
uh, thing back in here and then I cook it in here, okay? So you, if you know anything about making tau fu fa at all, traditionally my parents used to make it back in Malaysia once in a blue moon. It is an all day affair, okay? And you would soak this overnight for eight hours, okay? Um, using the thermomix, I don't soak it, I just use it straight. I was gonna say, I was able to do it overnight. So. Yeah, yeah, so you don't have to soak it on. because it's so powerful. And the great thing about the technology is German technology, it doesn't burn out the motor, okay? I don't understand uh, how it doesn't, but it's never, it won't Some, burn out your motor. Something along the lines of it's got the same technology as like a jet engine. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyway, uh, what I would usually do, use uh, these, blitz it, strain it, pour it back in, and then you want to heat it up, right? And obviously, if you want to do it step by step without using a thermomix, of course you can. People have been making tau fu fang for like what centuries, right? To? But this <laughs> just saves you like a lot of time doing it. Um, and the other thing is that uh, what you then want to do, you want to uh, you want to heat it up to just below boiling point, okay? So how do you tell, when you're cooking something on a stove, right? How do you know when something's boiling? It starts bubbling, yeah. right? Okay, so you know it's 100 degrees boiling point. But you don't want it to hit 100 degrees because you want it to actually, uh, if it hits 100 deg mm -hmm. degrees, it won't set, okay? The, 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 what I use for setting it is um, this thing called GDL, okay? Gluco delta lactone, glucona delta lactone. You can find this in uh, certain stores and you can just google it and buy it on ebay that's how i usually get a whole of it you only need like a quarter or half a teaspoon of this so it will last a long time um and then you know if it's at boiling point if it's too hot it won't work if it's below 90 degrees it won't work either all right so you want that with that fine threshold of between 90 and 98 degrees and the great thing about thermomix of course is it can cook it up to that threshold, okay, and not exceed it, okay? So of course, again, you can do it manually in the kitchen and, you know, use a thermometer or whatever, but this just, you know, it's an all-in-one thing, right? Uh, but today we're going to cheat, we're just going to use, we're going to assume we've already blitzed the beans. beans with some water and strain it out, and then you end up with something like this, okay? This is something I bought at the store, soya drink, sugar-free, okay? No sugar, and, you know, this is easier because it just saves you a bit of time. We're going to turn this on now and we're going to pour this in, okay? And in the meantime, can you get me some uh, tapioca starch as well? Yes. Yeah. So what we're going to do, we're going to make the tau fu fa and then we're going to make the syrup that goes with it, okay? So what I usually do, uh, I want a little bit of the soy milk in here, okay? I'm just going to pour it separately. And then we're going to, in a bit, we're going to add a bit of cornstarch or tapioca starch. I tend to use tapioca starch tapioca. in it, okay? So we'll add it later on. But in the meantime, I'm going to add the remainder of this. Just let me try and see if I can change the layout here, okay? So I've got like 50 things lying here. So wet wipes and whatnot. Sorry about this. Bigger, okay? And while I'm at it, you know, if you can just barely see, this is my beautiful Lenovo laptop. Uh... Thanks to Lenovo, I can do all these live streams. Okay, so here you go. We're just gonna pour this in, right? And the thing about the Thermomix is that it's got scales as well, okay? So you can actually weigh and be more specific. So here we go, we're just gonna go to the, okay, just the scales, okay? And we're gonna pour this in, oops. So we just make about 700 mils of this, okay? So you're, you're not making huge amounts, you know, that you're not going to... Well, my parents used to make it. To be fair, we come from a big family. Uh, but my parents used to make it. They'll make it in, like, these big, like, giant, like, pots, right? And then we would have, uh, like, soy milk and tofu fa coming out of our ears for days, okay? Uh, but today, we're just making a small amount, okay? Just, like, about half a, half a thing of this, okay? And then what I want to do is I want to heat it up, okay? So back to here, and if you can see, you can't really see this, okay? So oh, let me just, okay, okay. Oh, it's, it's a bit reflective, bright. so let, let's just go back to the other layout. Okay, so if you can see this, 
we have to the problem is Paul is too tall so I can't <laughs> tilt the camera down okay so I'm gonna set the timer okay let's say oops here we go no. we're gonna set the timer okay so I'll put it at 10 minutes and I want to set the temperature to 98 degrees okay and here I'm gonna set it to, to just start stirring it okay so it's gonna start stirring it and it's going to uh, take it up to 98 degrees and depending on you know whether it hits 98 degrees before the 10 minutes which it will uh, or if it hits the 10 minutes or whatever whatever runs out first right it will beep and let me know and that's all I need for the moment okay so for those of you who like tofu fa or who have tried tofu fa before um, this uh, th this is one of the ways to to set your soy milk mixture okay GDL uh, if you don't have GDL other people use different things some people use the you know some people use um, gelatin okay some people use agar and some people use uh, the, the traditional one which is uh, what's it called is it possible? No, it's yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's like something. uh yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But to me, uh personally I use GDL and one of the top Malaysian Tao Fa places based in Epo that we're actually featuring in our IDBs yeah project. our interactive digital brochure campaign with Tourism Malaysia that's coming up very, very soon, uh they use GDL as well. So that gives me a little bit of like um um, you know, it doesn't make me feel so bad about using GDL, okay? But also, the other thing, if you can get a hold of it, is this thing, right? Uh, anyone knows what this is? I, will, I yeah, practically yeah, I need, do, do. <laughs> you don't count. I'll practically <laughs> give a prize of this. And this I actually learned in Malaysia at that Daofu Bar place that we're featuring in our next series of videos. Literally, for tourism Malaysia. as soon as we finish that store, <laughs> Jackie's on Amazon. What is this thing? Yeah. Re refractometer. Buy yeah. one. Yeah. So <laughs> this we're going to use this as kind of like a, a a a backup measure to make sure that the the soy milk is the right consistency for it to set properly. Right, okay. Uh, because sometimes maybe you know some different brands will have it in different thicknesses. And so, also when you're doing it yourself, you don't know if you've added too much water or yeah. whatever. Yeah, so these are all the things you need to take into account, okay? Um, so, as far as the Thermomix, like I said, back to the Thermomix, what are the differences between the TM5 and the TM6, okay? When I got the TM5, I think uh, fairly shortly after that, the TM6 came out. Not like, you know, we're talking maybe a couple of years after, I can't remember now, maybe two or three years later. Uh, after that, the TM6 came out, and the person who sold me, sold me the TM5 at the time said, look um they're practically the same just wait for the next version to come out there's no point in upgrading now okay so i went along with that for the last seven years okay until i went over to the thermomix hq here in sydney and checked out the tm6 and that's where i realized that it actually has a lot of features that were missing that i really missed in the tm5 like i said i've been using the tm5 for seven years so it's no like you know it's no no small feat that I've, I use it more than all my other kitchen appliances put together. So it is very, very useful in and of itself. But TM6 has a lot of other features that I was missing. First of all, uh, one of the most important ones is the, the heat threshold. Okay, the TM5, the highest heat setting it can go up to is 120 degrees Celsius. Okay, the TM6 can actually go up to 160 degrees Celsius. What does that mean? It means I can now cook my sambals, cook a lot of stuff and brown a lot of stuff that I couldn't previously, okay? Previously the TM5 could, you know, could cook stuff but it couldn't reach to the point where it was hot enough where I could cook the sambal until it's what we call garing in Malay, okay? Which is like almost like a nice crunchy, like it can even do crunchy fried um, shallots now, okay? So there are recipes in there for it. The other thing about it that I really like is that the cooking time, okay, the old one stops at 90 minutes, okay, which means that there are a number of things I couldn't do. I couldn't sous vide in it, okay. 90 minutes is not long enough for some stuff that, you know, you want to sous vide for hours, okay. This one can, um, and not just sous vide, but a lot of other things as well if, in terms of like, if you like to make your own yogurt, okay, so it's got all these all built into it now. 
uh, that I'm looking forward to exploring. No, it's very, very new. I literally only opened up the, 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 the parcel like a few weeks ago, so I haven't used it as much as I would like, but I was compelled to get a hold of it once I found out all these new features that uh, it's capable of. And you know what? The One of the most interesting features that I really like, I didn't think I would care for it, is the built-in like um, Wi-Fi enabled recipe database. Okay, I think I'm a professional cook, you know, I don't need to be like um, using recipes that from other sources, all right? Those are for all the amateur cooks, right? Um, and also what it does, it does this guided cooking thing, okay? So you can actually look it up, look up the recipe, okay? Say so you want to make mayonnaise, you look it up and it tells you, okay, first, add this, okay? Weigh how much oil in there, then add how much lemon juice in there, add whatever in there, and then you just click next, 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 and then say it's now to uh, turn on the speed to four, and then you turn it on to four, and it starts doing it for you, and then when it's done, it stops, and voila, there's your mayonnaise, okay? So yeah, sure, I can make it myself, but I have to think about it, okay, or oh, when do I start, or does it look okay, or whatever, but with the guided cooking, it does it all for you. You don't even have to think about it. And of course, these recipes that are accessible accessible via Wi-Fi here, you can actually tweak it, okay? So maybe you want a little bit more lemon in your mayonnaise, you want to add something else, you can add it into it and, and tweak it that way, okay? And then if I'm not at home and I go to Paul, can you make me a batch of mayonnaise before I get home today? he can just go into the library and do it exactly how I would want it done, okay? So no surprises there. And that's what I find really, really useful. Like I said, I am a professional cook. Uh, I cook for a living. But things like this where I don't even have to think about it, it's just amazing, okay? So that's the guided cooking thing. Now, here, this has reached 98 degrees, okay? And what I've got is a little bit more of the soy milk in here. And I'm going to add a bit of tapioca starch. I mean, use cornstarch here, okay? So, so add it in. And then we're going to add the GDL. Okay, this is a GDL. We're going to add like about, uh, for that amount, maybe about, uh, about a third of a teaspoon, maybe. Let me just put... Can you get me a little spoon, please? Sure. And then what we're going to do... I've got a Pyrex here, and I'm just waiting for the spoon. As always, I'm not the most organized. So a bit of cornstarch mixed in with your soy, soy milk. And you know what? Um, I have had people try and make tofu fa based on my recipe, and it didn't turn out. And the reason was that they were using, you know, those... Uh, Dairy milk replacement, soy drink, uh, soy milk that you get at your Western supermarket. White right? people groceries. Yeah, <laughs> as opposed to the soy drink, okay? And it didn't turn out for whatever reason. And this is where this thing comes into it, okay? This is where I'm going to look through the thing. Okay, so I'm pouring this into my Pyrex here, okay? Along with a little bit of this, the GDL. You have to be a little bit light handed with it, okay? A little bit of GDL. Mix it in here. Okay, this is 98 degrees stopping it. Okay, that's how it looks now. And then what you can do is put a little bit in here. Okay, and you're going to check how thick it is, okay? And it will tell you if it's between, can you have a look at this? You want it at a 6, okay? I'm going to get Paul to look through the thing, it's like looking through a kaleidoscope and making sure it sits within that range, okay? Okay, I'm just going to use the light on my phone. Okay, we're sitting at between 6 and 7. Okay, six and seven. Okay, should be okay. So we're gonna pour it in here. Okay. Okay, give us a key. 
Okay. Just give it one quick stir in one direction. And then we're going to cover this. Where's my... I'm just using this plastic lid to cover it. Okay. And I'm going to leave it alone. Okay. For 20 minutes. Hey, Google, set timer for 20 minutes. Um, now, so I need to rinse this out. Second or, timer for 20 minutes. Starting now. I've got, that's my Lenovo Smart Display, by the way. <laughs> um, this is, uh, this needs to be rinsed out, but we're going to leave it alone because you know what? I took advantage of this offer from Thermomix when I bought this. This is how new my Thermomix is. The current offer, in fact, is still running in that if you buy a brand new Thermomix, you get the option to buy a second bowl, you know, for... for $29. Usually a second bowl costs... Uh, like $375, no, don't quote me on something like $375, but if you buy a Thermomix before January 12th in Australia, uh, you get a second bowl for 20, an extra $29, so it saves you having to wash that up. So what we're going to do, I'm going to put the second bowl in, I'm going to make the syrup, okay? So obviously, again, nothing special about making a th um, the syrup, you can just do it in a saucepan, but why do that when you've got a Thermomix here that can do it for you? So to make the the syrup what you want i'm just going to set this over here to make the syrup you just want some ginger right and we're going to slice it up you want some slices of ginger and you know the uh, the add-on to the thermomix that i actually went to watch is actually a slicer okay the slicer is going to be available starting i believe january or february okay so i had like kind of like a sneak peek into what the slicer does and what it does is that you put it on top and it will actually slice stuff for you okay so um if you get it like soon enough you'll be able to get an add-on slicer but in the meantime we're just slicing it ourselves okay so i'm chucking in some of this ginger okay and we're going to make a sugar syrup. If you're Malaysian, maybe you prefer gula malaka. I actually personally prefer just plain old white sugar, okay? But if you do it like gula malaka, gula malaka is a Malaysian palm sugar, which is really hard and like comes in a log, right? You can chuck the whole log in there and just beat it up and it will just turn it into crumbles for you very, very quickly, okay? Again, without ruining the blades or anything like that. So I'm just using good old white sugar here. And adding a bit of water. And again, I'm just going to cook it. I'll just set it for 10 minutes again. And just let it cook. Okay, so again, I don't have to worry about uh, watching the stove. I don't have to worry about like having stuff spill out and whatever. I'll just set this to 100 degrees and it's just going to cook it and boil it until the sugar is all dissolved. You can cook it a little bit longer till it evaporates as well. So there are a whole lot of other functions with the Thermomix that you can actually use it for okay so that's that i mentioned about making crispy fried onion okay that's another thing if you go to my website jackiem.com.au i have a whole ton of recipes you go to my youtube channel youtube.com slash jackiem i have a ton of youtube videos and uh in the past when i used to do a lot of live streams uh if you're old enough <laughs> some of you actually followed me over from twitch i used to live stream three times a week on Twitch and I do it for like you know up to three hours each time all right so I used to cook a lot on Twitch but one thing I would tell you guys is that one of the things that is absolutely worth your time doing every month is to set aside like five hours <laughs> one weekend or something like that and actually like peel onion and then slice it using a mandolin and slice it very thinly and then fry it in an oil, uh, in a wok full of oil until it turns crispy, all right? And you strain it. I'll show you guys how to do it. I've got a YouTube video that shows you how to fry your own crispy fried onion or crispy fried shallots, and it, it's got a whole ton of views, right? And it is annoying. 
it is time consuming, it can be a bit messy because you're frying it and then it just like gets oil splatter everywhere, your whole place feels like your furniture feels like it's like got like oil residue on it right for days afterwards but it was worth it because who doesn't like crispy fried onion and then after I make it like you know people like Paul and my daughter and all that they would like just top up their food with like half a cup of crispy fried onion like just with total abandon no respect for the amount of effort that goes None into making it yeah and now you know you can actually make crispy fried shallots in your thermomix because of the extra high temperature threshold okay so it's even got like a pre-programmed recipe in there for you to be able to do that so wow. My yeah. question is, what are you going to do with those extra five hours on a weekend? Yeah, exactly, right? Oh. And that's the other thing as well. You know, someone actually mentioned to me at church, she says, oh, you know, people are telling me about how much time I can save with the thermomix. Well, I actually love cooking. I, I, you know, if I don't spend all that time in the kitchen cooking, what else am I going to do? I'm going to be redundant. I mean, but everybody is different, right? Um, but, I mean, I love cooking, obviously, but there are certain aspects of cooking that I like more than others okay so the aspects that I like less are like having to clean up the mess afterwards the other thing that I use my thermomix for is to make roti chanai dough uh, for those of you uh, who, are, who are Malaysian or who love Malaysian food you should know what roti chanai is you might have seen me actually make roti chanai flipping it like and stuff like that right there's, a, there's an art to it but making the dough itself, there's an art to it as well. And back in my restaurant days, I used to have like this big giant dough mixer that you could not actually remove from the restaurant if you if you wanted to because it's so big, it's bigger than the doorway. So I don't know how they actually got it in in the first place. I think they must have like built yeah built it in like you know. Um, but it was so big, I would make my roti chanai in like I think about twenty kilo batches of flour at a time, right? And but even if you imagine a smaller dough mixer, right, your typical, do you want me to scrap that yeah, other, sorry, just the bowl? Yeah. You know your typical regular dough mixer, I've got one of those, okay? Uh, over the years, I've accumulated so many kitchen appliances, it's not funny. Uh, so I do have that, okay? But when I make my roti chanai dough nowadays, okay, so there's a typical uh, dough mixer, most people will be familiar with this, so you've got this, right? this cover you can in theory feed stuff into it and have that shield to protect your flour from getting everywhere but it's, it doesn't actually work that well right every time I use that kind of dough mixer I end up with like flour splattered like on my bench and whatever and then I have to clean up and all that right I like I said I make my roti chanai dough in my dough uh, in the thermomix now and you know how long it takes it takes like about six minutes okay so what I do I chop all the ingredients in right I can program it so that you know Paul or even <laughs> Noah one day would be able to follow it it will just tell him to okay weigh because the scales are built in as well it will just like turn on the scale and says add 600 grams of plain flour and then they'll just add and then you click on next you click next it'll just say add 250 mils of water you just add and then next add one teaspoon of uh, salt add a tablespoon or two of condensed milk and then cut and then it'll tell you close the lid and turn on the the, the, the the stir up sort of thing and then you go away it will stir it and stop and that's how I make it well I make it because I know all the recipes right oh I will set it to, to, to knead it okay so it can knead dough knead it for three minutes and then let it rest for five minutes come back three minute, uh, five minutes later knead it again for three minutes and that's it so that's what three eleven minutes okay to make my roti chanai dough i take it out i boil it into like uh, these balls and set it aside let it cover rest for another two hours that's it my roti chanai is ready i can actually if i wanted to make roti chanai every single day okay and make it fresh at home and using ingredients that i would use so i'm not using iffy ingredients maybe some people prefer to use butter or ghee as opposed to margarine which i do right <laughs> so you can actually dictate what sort of ingredients go into it so that's all the beauty of like being able to make all these things from scratch yourself people like eat my sambal and they love my sambal i can make it in the thermomix okay uh they eat my laksa i make my laksa paste in here they eat my prawn noodle soup i make the prawn noodle soup um 
paste in here okay so what I do with uh, prawns every time I eat prawns I peel I keep all the shell and then I chuck the shells in here once I've got like a you know a fair bit of it usually I, 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 I still actually have too much <laughs> apparently I eat a lot of prawns uh, I chuck all the shells in here add garlic add oil and cook it okay add some seasoning um, cover it and then blitz it into a paste okay uh, and then I transfer the paste into boxes and I freeze them. Every time I feel like prawn noodle soup, I take a couple of spoonfuls of the paste, add water or add like unseasoned stock, simmer it and then strain it into a bowl of like um, cooked noodles and voila, that's your really strong, intense flavored prawn noodle soup. Okay, served with the sambal that's also made in here, uh, served with the crispy fried onions if you like, also served um, made in here. And if you like to do what I used to do, I used to, because this actually has other, um, uh, other like parts to it, right? Which are a steamer basket and whatever. I used to actually, after I've made the prawn noodle soup paste, every time I felt like prawn noodle soup, I would add like two tablespoons of the paste in here, add a bit of water, and then while it's heating up the water and simmering and whatever, it doesn't really need to simmer that much. I add the steamer basket on top and add like, you know, uh, prawns, vegetable like gang gong and uh, noodles okay and steam them on top and then and also an egg okay I'll just, I, I like to eat like a, a boiled egg with it as well so all of that's cooking on top while the soup is just like simmer, simmering at the bottom turn it off um, pour the steamer basket contents into a bowl and pour the soup strain it into the bowl and that's my prawn noodle soup okay so these are all the ways I've been using my Thermomix for the last seven years but like I said the, so having a TM6 is a game changer to me because it's got other features that uh, I haven't been able to take advantage of right until now, now that it's available. Okay, so there you go. Uh, anyone have any questions at all, hit me up and let me know. Uh, if you want the recipes to this, like I said, go over to uh, malaysianchefs.com slash recipes if you're not already signed up to my email list if you are then um, you don't need to do anything else I will send out the recipes to you guys okay as soon as I've got some of my other stuff put together um, now we've just got about uh, yeah seven and a half minutes before this is ready the uh, the, the the syrup is actually ready to go, okay? I'm just letting it run for the moment, just for the heck of it. But just let me stop it anyway, so we can see. Here we go. The timer's, the timer's, yeah, the timer's counting down. So it just wants to be sure that you don't end up burning yourself, <laughs> okay? Uh, for those of you who live in Australia, you might have heard some controversies back in the day about like people getting hurt. Um, from the Thermomix. I'm not going to comment on those, but like, yeah, I'm not going to comment on like other people's experience, but I'll put it this way. There are a lot of safety measures in place in a Thermomix, right? This, uh, and more so now even, you know, just to make sure that people uh, don't accidentally misuse it. Okay. But here you go. So this is the syrup. Okay. And what we would do is just pour this into a glass jar, let it cool down and keep it in the fridge okay so it's the ginger syrup super easy obviously you can just cook this in a saucepan yourself and whatever but doing it this way i don't have to keep an eye on it making sure it doesn't like overflow and splatter and whatever sort of stuff and if i so want i can actually clean this you remember how we use this for the soy milk right what i can do the tm6 has a pre-clean function which is fantastic for me uh, I mean, <laughs> not that I'm too lazy to clean it, but I can just put water into the bowl and turn it and you add a little bit of detergent in here, just a couple of drops, right? So like, if you, especially if you're doing anything that's a little bit sticky, you know, if you've got oil or, 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 or like sticky dough or whatever sort of stuff, right? Uh, you put some water in here, put a couple of drops in here, and then you go and pre-clean it. Morning fresh. And you got the option like you want just a short run or you want a dough uh, run or whatever, just cover it. And it just basically splashes it around, cleans it for you. So 
uh, when it's done, you just kind of like practically just rinse it out, maybe just like give it a once over and voila, it's done. You see it's going like, you know, so I don't have to worry about, oh, quick soak it and quick like, you know, scrub it, quick, um, you know, um, whatever else with it. it it's just that for you, okay? So that's the other function with the TM6 that didn't exist with the TM5, right? And obviously I could do the same with the TM5 because all it's doing is it's going through all the different cycles. It spins fast, and it does it for whatever. And, and all that, right? So, five more minutes, and we're gonna check on how this is going. Okay, who likes Dao Fu Ba? Can we get like the, the scoop yeah. and the bowl for it as well? Okay. And uh, if you're watching this, whether in the uh, events that I set up or you're watching this, because you randomly came across it, you can just message me either privately or just place a comment and hopefully I don't miss your comment, right? If I do, uh, just tag me and remind me. I don't hang out on social media as much as you would think I did, okay? So that's the sound to say that the pre-clean function, no, you want the metal one so you can scoop out, okay? Here you go, okay. So look, it's just, Froth it up, okay? Or may or may not have put a little bit too much detergent in there, but it doesn't matter. 100% put too much yeah. detergent. So we'll, we'll see how it turns out. Okay, in theory, there's another four minutes to go with the Daofu Fa. All right, so remember the ingredients you want are basically soy milk, okay? Which you can do from making yourself in a Thermomix by blitzing this, and I have, I have the recipe for all of them, okay? Blitzing this with some water and straining it and then cooking it to 98 degrees or buying something like this and I understand if you live in like weird places in the world like Europe or something like that you may not be so lucky to be able to get this okay this is not the same as the soy milk that you get as a non-dairy uh, substitute in the milk section of your woolies or whatever okay because the the, the, the thickness is different, okay? And that's why we now get that refractometer, okay? Oh, sorry, that we actually bought on eBay, <laughs> okay? This has a gauge, like you put a drop of the soy milk in here, put it down, you look at it, and you want it at about level six, which is the right. Six to seven. Yeah, six to seven, which is the right thickness uh, for it to work, okay? And then you want GDL, glucono delta, lactone just a little bit of it mixed with a bit of cornstarch or tapioca starch with a bit of water or uh, cold soy milk pour it into the pan the, the, the whatever it is that you're going to be putting your soy milk into your hot soy milk into right which is here let's just change the okay so this is what it looks like right now okay two minutes do you think it's ready i wouldn't risk it Okay. Give it a shake and just... Okay, so let's have a look, okay? In theory, usually, okay, after you do all that, 20 minutes you want. Okay, let's have a look, okay? This is what it looks like now. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> Don't shake it too much. Okay. There you go. Uh, it actually looks like it's fine. I was being too. Okay. <laughs> so... Okay. So maybe if I let it another two minutes, it will set a little bit better. But you get the idea, okay? So let's cover this quickly. Hopefully, it will set some more. So Daofu Fa and your sugar syrup. Okay. And got a spoon. Oh, I think you want another spoon. Okay. Let me just move myself over to this side. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, I'm, ha I'm struggling to read your questions here because, um, yeah, because like I said, we had to use a workaround to be able to do this, okay? So obviously in Malaysia, you use a different spoon. Yeah, okay. Okay, who, who likes Daofu Fa? Yeah. Mm. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So you can make this yourself every day now. For a while, when I was going through this crazy phrase, uh, phase of making tofu fa, I would make tofu fa like practically every day or every second day, sort of thing, until I was so sick of it. So nowadays, I have to admit the novelty is lost on me a little bit now. But Paul is the new <laughs> yeah, it's the new poster boy for tofu fa, and that's one of the many many things that I use. Uh, to make in my Thermomix, okay? Uh, thanks so much guys for joining us. Uh, I hope you found this useful. If you've got any questions, like I said, just ping me. Uh, best place to reach me if you want to get my attention probably is uh, on Facebook in my Malaysian Street Food Kitchen Facebook group, Jackie M's Malaysian Street Food Kitchen. That's a free group where you can post your uh, cooking like experiments and whatever. Or you can just, I guess, email me at Jackie at JackieM.com.au And uh, if you want the recipe again, you can get a hold of it at MalaysianChefs.com slash recipes. What that does, it adds you to my email list. And as with everyone on my email list, I keep you updated on my activities, including when I go live. But also, more importantly, you get all my recipes, okay, right in your inbox. So easy peasy. Uh, if you're interested to find out more about the Thermomix, the TM6 specifically, uh, make sure you get a hold of me directly. Because like I said, you know, if you're in the market to to actually buy one of these and you don't have a consultant you know out there at the moment who looks after you then by all means reach out to me and they've got some very very exciting in incentives at the moment both as for people who buy a thermomix and for people who want to invite friends and family to check out the thermomix uh, you can do it because I actually have a little bit of time between now and when we fly out to Malaysia on the 8th of January uh, and you're based in Sydney, you can actually schedule an in-person demo with yours truly and you get to eat the food as well, okay? How many people get to eat Jackie M's food for free? <laughs> All right, so you can do that and otherwise, if you're based outside of Sydney, we can always hop on in a private Zoom session and do a virtual demo that way, okay? And I promise you, we will try to be a little bit more organized next time so that there's none of this uh, running around stuff. Okay, thanks again so much, guys. Good to be back, all right? And I look forward to seeing you same time this coming Wednesday, Australia. Uh, Sydney time is, uh, what time is it? Sydney time is 1 p.m. All right, it's I'll see you later, ciao. Did it stop? Why why is it not stopped? Um, okay. There you go. Let me just close it. Yes.